chat wimbe sifa zako sifa wewe ungetie bali majume kuja tutangaze sifa sifa wewe ungetie The devil can do nothing about it. Na hatunyamazishwi. 
Amen. 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 Yes. We kama unanyamaza kuna wenye hawanyamazi. Amen. Yes, jipe shughuli. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But we are not quitting. Any time soon. Hallelujah. Tuko hapa tumalishe tumalizie tume yetu. And we accomplish what we were called to accomplish. Na wanao sita sita na kurudi nyuma na kuungana na kambi za waovu washindwe milele kwa jina la Yesu. Kwa sababu hata Mungu mwenyewe anasema hana furaha na wao. Na kwa maana si mimi na si wewe. Uliza mtu ama <laughs> Amen. Tuko hapa kutangaza ukuu wa Bwana. Tunashukuru Mungu. We do not take it for granted. We know ya kwamba kuna mitandao mingi lakini wewe umeopt kuketi hapo kutusikiza. Tunasema wewe ni wetu. Ubarikiwe sana. Situpigia wanao to watch mikono mizuri. Hallelujah! Hiyo ni ya kusema karibu. Karibu wewe unaye tutazama uko nyumbani. Tunakupenda. Na tunasema wewe ni wetu. Amen. Wewe ni wetu. Na ubarikiwe sana. Karibu. Tungaji. Majina laisi. Leo nataka kushiriki nanyi on a slave by choice. A slave by by choice ama Kiswahili ni mtumwa kwa hiari bana aspire sifa verse 8 says and you shall count seven sabbaths of years for yourself seven times seven, seven times seven years and the time of the seven sabbaths of years shall be to you 49 years then you shall cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land. And you shall consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. And each of you shall return to his possession. And each of you shall return to his family. That 50th year shall be a jubilee to you. In it, you shall neither sow nor reap what, you, what grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field. In this year of Jubilee, each of, each of you shall return to his possession. Bana wetu wapewe sifa. Baba wetu tunaomba kwamba uambatane pamoja nasi tunapomega mkate wa asubu ya leo. Neno lako ni mkate ulio hai. Neno lako ni mkate wa uzima. Naomba ukaudumia kila moja wetu tulio pamoja katika asubuhi ya leo wanao tutazama kwa mitandao bwana ninaomba uwepo wako sauti yako ikanena na kila mmoja wetu tuelekeze katika makusudi yako tuelekeze katika mapenzi yako tawala katikati yetu tawala katika roho zetu miliki maishani mwetu baba tunakupenda tunakuenzi tunakuabudu katika jina la Yesu Tumeomba na kuamini. Amen. God bless you as you take your seat. Nimesema leo inashiriki nanyi kuhusu kuwa mtumwa kwa hiari. A slave by choice. Praise God. And I, I believe the text ile nimeshia na nyinyi asubuhi ya leo ile tumesoma pamoja it's a foundation to help us build on what god has put in my heart this morning kwa sababu nataka kila mmoja wetu asipotee mbali tuambatane pamoja bwana wetu apewe sifa ninapoangalia katika old testament and new testament you realize many times this word either slave o bond servant ama servant inatumika sana 
maneno haya sijui kwa Kiswahili naweza kusema ni mtumwa na bond servant ni ule mtumwa mfanyikazi aliyejifunganisha ama ambaye ameji how can i put it what is a bond servant in right Kiswahili word yani it's the same word that is used for a slave a bond ni kumaanisha umeunganishwa yani umefunganishwa na mtu fulani wewe ni mtumwa wake na pia ndiyo neno linalotumika when we talk about a servant kia mtu anasema ako na mfanyikazi ama ako na mtumishi watu wanaita the servants of god mtumishi and sometimes we don't understand the depth of what we are saying Unapoangalia I would like us to go back to the New Testament Jude akiandika alisema maneno haya in the book of Jude chapter 1 ama Jude is only one chapter verse 1 and 2 he says Jude a bond servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James to those who are called sanctified by God the Father and the preserved in Jesus Christ mercy peace and love be multiplied to you anaanza kwa kusema Jude anaji identify anajitambulisha na anasema a bond servant of Jesus Christ ama mtumwa wa Yesu Kristo can i see this in swahili bana asifiwe Jude is a brother of James and i believe as the holy spirit speaks to him and we know there is James a brother of Jesus Christ and so when he speaks he is introducing himself akisema mimi ni ndugue Yakobo na kumaanisha i am also a brother to Jesus but he says a bond servant of Jesus Christ mtumwa wa Yesu Kristo bwana wetu apewe sifa a bond servant of Jesus Christ the same words are used by James his brother and he says when you read the book of James 1:1 anasema bond servant of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ James 1:1 Yakobo pia anaji introduce na kusema kwamba yeye is also a bond servant that is to say a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ am a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ now he's these are these are words i want you to monitor or to be keen as we read them The apostle Peter describes himself in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. 2 Peter 1:1 he says that a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. A bond servant Simon Peter, a bond servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. He says to those who, are ob- who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and the Savior Jesus Christ he is addressing believers wale ambao wamepokea imani ile ile ambao anaandika na anashuhudia and he is introducing himself to them and he says Peter ama Simon Peter a bond servant bwana wetu apewe sifa. The apostle Paul writing to Titus in Titus chapter 1 verse 1. He says or he describes himself as Paul a bond servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul a bond servant of God and an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. Now you realize this New Testament believers apostles men of god people who are serving having been 
interacted with Christ as they ministered and served God ilifika mahali wakajua kwamba they are not just there to be called believers but they have a greater responsibility na kwamba kuwa kwa Yesu wamejitolea wamejipeana wamekubali kuitwa bond servants ama kuitwa watumwa sio mitume watumwa bwana wetu apae sifa Now with this you see Jude says is a bond servant Paul says is a bond servant Peter says is a bond servant James says is a bond servant Now there must be something that these old believers are telling us They must be sending a message to the people they are writing to Lazima kuna kitu wananena Lazima wanaeleza kitu in using this word repeatedly and wote wanaongea lugha moja. Lazima kuna kitu wote walikuwa wameona, wameijua, wameifahamu, wanataka kusema na kupitisha kwa kanisa. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. They wanted the church to understand and I believe they had witnessed. In my mind I look at them and I say They had witnessed the people who served as slaves to the Roman soldiers to the Roman leaders or in their houses like the centurion Alias Sema I'm a person in charge I give authority I speak a word and the people obey Bwana wetu apewe sifa Walikuwa na ufahamu ya kwamba walijua there is something that we are serving under which has a similarity to what we have seen ama kuna kitu ndani yetu kinafanana na wale watu tumeona wakitumika wakifanya kazi kwa warumi wakiitwa slaves and there is a similarity in us that as we serve Christ identify us or qualifies us ama makes us to be called slaves Oh bond servants. Hallelujah. Nimesema a slave by choice. Bwana wetu ainuliwe. So, when you look at the word slave, the definition, ila tunasema mtumwa. The, the 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 meaning of it, especially in old times, it meant a person who is legally the property of another kwamba ilimaanisha ni mtu ambaye kwa kawaida na maishani mwake yeye ni mali ya mwingine you cannot be a slave unless you've been either bought or you've been you've given yourself umejipeana ama umenunuliwa kwa fedha ukafanyika mtuma another thing about a slave is that they are given instructions and they obey forcefully the old definition kwamba they they, are, they they obey by being forced wanalazimishwa and they do excessively hard work wanaoitwa watumwa wanafanya kazi ngumu na tena nyingi sana si kidogo they are normally given heavy jobs hard work to do na wanaifanya bila kuuliza maswali a slave is a person under the dominion of another person or a thing these are my descriptions kwamba mtumwa pia anaweza kuwa ni mtu ambaye yuko chini ya mamlaka ya mtu mwingine you are under the dominion yani unatawaliwa kwa nguvu na mtu mwingine ama kitu kingine kinakutawala bwana wetu apewe sifa something that can be over you inakutawala it becomes your master like when you read a uh, roman 6 verse 16 paul anasema that sin can be your master because to whom you yield your body members to his servants or his slaves or his uh, uh, bond servants 
you will become bwana asifiwe either to righteousness and to life or and to sin to death so when you yield your members to sin you become a slave of sin when you yield your members to righteousness you become a slave of bwana asifiwe ama mnaona haiambatani hivyo and you can be a slave of a tv yes when you you cannot be able always ku ku control maisha yako the tv controls you in a in a dictate there was you sit in your sitting room ama you are a, a slave of your mobile phone it you can't do without it it is ever in your hands na kila wakati inakuambia angalia soma hii enda kwa hii mambo you know and when it controls you you become it is slave to whom you yield yourselves unto his servants you become bana asifi kwa hivyo ukijitolea kutumikia iwe ni mtu ama ni kitu ambacho kina control kina dominate kina manipulate your life hicho kitu unakuwa mtumwa wake it doesn't matter what it is but whatever you are con- is controlling your life you are a slave and it is your master bwana wetu apa sifa on the other hand unakuta the definition of a, a slave in the biblical term is not so much tied to manipulation and the control without self will lakini it is in the biblical term is a free the slave is free to act within the bounds of god's will yani unapoingia katika utumwa in the sense of serving Christ kumtumikia Kristo ni kumaanisha ingawa unaitwa mtumwa lakini unatumika kati kati ya the confines of God's will si nje ya mapenzi ya Mungu you are as, you are serving as a born servant but with the confines in the will of God si nje ya mapenzi ya Mungu first peter 2:16 anasema as free yet not using your liberty as a cloak for sin but as bond servants of god bana eto persifa that is a basic foundation of how we we understand the christian service am a bondship bana eto persifa as free anasema you are a bond servant of god but you are free to serve god in liberty uweze kumtimikia mungu katika uhuru lakini usitumie uhuru wako kama njia ya kutenda dhambi haleluya so you are free to live in the confines of salvation and you are at liberty si kwa kulazimishwa hapa si ile forced labor it is willingly but not using your freedom as a clock to sin clock hapa inamaanisha ni kama nguo usichukua uhuru wako useme kwa sababu niko chini ya neema naweza kuvaa niingie katika dhambi na nisiulizwe nikae maisha ya uovu na niingie kanisani na mtu asiniulize kwa sababu kuna uhuru katika nyumba ya Mungu that is using your liberty as a clock to sin bana wetu apo sifa Unajua kuwa uhuru ndani ya wokovu. It is true we are saved by grace. But grace does not say kwa sababu tuko chini ya neema do what you want and continue saying you are a believer. Involve yourself with any kind of evil. Yaani usike na uovu wowote. Na bado umeokoka na wakristo hawezi kukataa hapana liberty in Christ is not freedom to sin. Amen. Bwana wetu apo sifa. A slave by choice. Praise God. The New Testament inapongea kuhusu a bond servant ama a slave. It means someone who voluntarily serves 
others like ni mmoja ambaye kwa hiari anatumikia wengine ama mwingine si kwa kulazimishwa the new testament bond servant ni mmoja ambaye hajalazimishwa but voluntarily okay the greek word used for bond servant or slave is doulos and it means in most cases a permanent that you are playing a permanent role of service to somebody else kwamba unatumika na si kwa siku moja like you have given your life to the service of Christ and you are willing to stay there umejitoa maisha yako mtumikie Yesu na haufanyi siku moja alafu utoke you want to stay and you want to stay and stay permanent bana yetu apoe sifa ndio Yesu alitumia this the word that Christ used wakati alisema the one who serves in your midst ama anayetumika anayehudumia wengine kwenu huyo ndiye mkubwa in terms of the kingdom the whoever serves the others is greatest in the kingdom kwamba anayetumika you know in the world the servant is the least in the kingdom of god the servant is the greatest tuko pamoja bwana yesu ainuliwe kwamba tu ukiangalia these are the words that jesus referred in mark chapter 9 verse 35 na inamaanisha one who gives himself up to another another's will yeye anayejitolea maisha yake kutumikia mapenzi ya mwingine you give your will away so that you can serve the will of another person bwana wetu asifiwe you become his bond servant you become his slave unafanyika mtumwa wake and by serving under this definition si kumaanisha kwamba you are playing a lesser role apana Yesu alisema anayeitwa mtumishi kati kati yenu he is the greatest praise be to god now another thing that comes out of this word is it's one devoted to service of another disregarding own self interest kwamba unatumika kwa hiari unamtumikia mtu mwingine na una disregard ama unaweka you know your 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 interest candle unasema yes i have my personal interest lakini kwa sababu ninataka kuwa mtumishi wa huyu nimeweka zangu kando ili nimtumikie mapenzi yake now this is the best definition of christianity kwamba we had our will we had our own desires we had our own life lakini tunaiweka kando we refuse we disregard it ili tuweze kuingia na kutumika katika mapenzi ya Kristo bwana wetu apee sifa so when the servants of god say i am a bond servant of the lord jesus anamaanisha si hudumu mapenzi yangu i don't preach my gospel i am not here to do my will nina mapenzi ya yule ninayependeza ninafanya kusudi si zangu that is why paul was able to say it is no longer i that lives but christ lives in me maana aishi maisha yake anaishi maisha ya yesu bana wetu apoe sifa so tunapoongea kuhusu a bond servant or a slave ama a servant in the new testament tunamaanisha mmoja ambaye ame sideline ame disregard his own interest akachukua makusudi na mapenzi ya Mungu ya Kristo akayatumikia akaishi kulingana nayo bana wetu apoe sifa you are no longer living your life but you are living the life of Christ you are no longer doing your personal interest lakini unatumika 
katika makusudi na mapenzi ya Mungu Baba. Bwana wetu apoe sifa. I believe that is the best definition you can ever give for the Christian faith. That is a bond servant. You are not serving your personal interest but the interest of Christ and the kingdom. Bwana wetu apoe sifa. So that's why you realize haya maneno yanapotumika there is an intention kuna kusudi tunatakiwa tuelewe ili tujiulize maisha ni mwetu am i a believer who can qualify to be called a bond servant of the lord jesus christ hallelujah because i believe the day we got saved si kwile tuli ingia katika wokovu something tremendous something great in the spiritual life took place in our lives kuna kitu kilifanyika when you said lord jesus forgive me my sins i surrender my life to you become my lord and my savior at that moment there were exchanges in the spirit ambapo a will was laid down and another will was taken into ama mapenzi ya mtu ama mapenzi yako iliwekwa kando yale mambo ulikuwa unaishia yaliwekwa kando makusudi yako yaliwekwa kando or you lay them aside and you took up the will of another bana eto presifa because in Christ I want you to see what happened when we came to the Lord. This is what you find in Leviticus chapter 25 mahali ambapo tumesoma. Ya kwamba Biblia inasema every seven years Israel walikuwa naambiwa take a rest. Every seven days after six days of labor the seventh day take a rest it's the sabbath bana asifiwe and god said in the same way vile tunahesabu wiki after every 50 weeks kulikuwa na a, 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 a week of rest ama wiki la mapumziko ilikuwa inaitwa feast of weeks which is later what we celebrated as pentecost bana asifiwe and after every six years the seventh year in israel ilikuwa a year of rest ama a sabbatical year a year of rest bana asifiwe and after seven years seven ama seven sabbaths seven sabbatical years then following year which would be the 50th year would be a year of rest and this time it would take longer i will explain this kwamba kulikuwa na mwaka uliokuwa very special uliitwa the year of jubilee bana asifiwe unajua kuna watu wanasikia jubilee wanafikiria ni ile pate ya uhuru na Naruto that is they just borrowed a name from the bible lakini katika njia za kiungu na kulingana na biblia jubilee was a very key and a significant year na ilikuwa ni mwaka ulionena katika israeli kwa watu na kwa inji na ulikuwa na mambo ambayo yaliambatana na huo mwaka that the bible say mwaka wa jubilee ukifika after seven sabbaths the following year will be a year of jubilee na katika jubilee bwana akasema mwaka huo hamtalima bwana asifiwe na hata hamtavuna ile chakula kinajimeza ama kujikuza chenyewe 
ama yale matunda yatotokea katika huo mwaka you don't go to harvest them bana asifiwe hakuna kwenda shambani aliwaambia nitawabariki kwamba mwaka wa sita nitawapatia uwezo wa kuvuna chakula cha kukula mwezi wa saba ama mwaka wa saba na mwaka wa nane mpande hadi mwaka wa tisa mtakapovuna because the food whatever they planted would take a year so god on the sixth year would multiply their harvest amen angeweza kusababisha he desire a produce enough for the seventh year and the eighth year where they will be planting until the ninth year when they will harvest bana <laughs> yeso inuliwe can i can i say this unajua mnaweza kuona kama ni stories zangu bana wetu apasifa mstari wa 20 unasema and if you say what shall we eat in the seventh year since we shall not so gather in our produce then i'll command my blessings on you in the sixth year and it will bring forth the produce enough for three years bana asifiwe verse 20 kwamba nitaamrisha baraka zangu kwa inchi kwamba itazama zao inayotosha miaka tatu bana asifiwe Simwambie bwana niingize hapa kwa hii jubilee niweze kufurahia miaka tatu without work but i can eat and the rest praise be to god hallelujah and the god would say ninataka muelewe what i am doing in your life namjua we are reading of shadows the reality is in christ hallelujah kwamba bwana aliwaambia mwaka ukifika that seven Time seven the seventh the seventh the seven of the seventh the seventh is called jubilee na katika jubilee kiingia mjue kuna mambo ninataka muelewe yatatendeka number one, dey nasema kwamba that would be a year of freedom praise god kwamba ni mwaka wa kuwekwa huru ni mwaka wa kutoka katika utumwa ni mwaka wa kutoka katika bond servantship kama mtu alikuwa mtumwa hata kama ulimnunua 2 years before the minute imefika the year of jubilee bila anasema that year every slave would go free take note kwamba kila mtumwa aliwekwa huru number two, all debts were cancelled deni zote kama nilikuwa na deni yako siku hiyo ikifika jubilee hallelujah deni zimeisha hawezi kuja kunidai ati ulikuwa na 1000 yangu bwana kuja unikulipe hakuna imeishia with jubilee Jubilee was a year of cancelling debts. Hallelujah. Madeni yote inaisha. Na Jubilee was a year of rest. Ni mwaka wa kupumzika. Ni mwaka si wa kufanya kazi, ni mwaka wa kupumzika. Bwana wetu apee sifa. And so when I believe every Israelite looked forward to this year walitazamia wakingojea mwaka ufike especially wale ambao labda wameuza inchi maana hata kama ulikuwa umenunua shamba na umelipa baada ya miaka hamsini imefika hiyo shamba inarudi hallelujah he hey, bwana alikuwa amesema anything isipokuwa labda ile kama umenunua kwa world city umenunua nyumba kwa the world city hiyo itabaki yako lakini kama ni shamba ulinunua huko nje everything would go back to the owner mashamba ilirudi kwa wenyewe deni za pesa zilirudiwa ama ziliishia kama kulikuwa na mtu aliyekuwa ameshika watoto wako like the woman who was saying 
niuze maz, uh, mafuta ili alisaidiwa na Elijah kuuza mafuta ili alipe deni watoto wake wasikuwe slaves huyo angefika the 50th year hapo watoto hata kama ilikuwa jana the following day they would be free bana asifiwe bana yesu ainuliwe so the land would be free aingelimwa na wale walikuwa wamenunua mashamba ilirudi kwa mwenye kukuza kama ulikuwa na deni ilikuwa cancelled kama ulikuwa utumwa utumwa uliisha unakuwa a free man rudi kwenu bwana yesu ainuliwe bwana yesu apewe sifa haleluya that is what when the lord spoke this word i want you to see this kwamba when christ died kuna mambo alitangaza ama when christ came into the ministry in the book of luke chapter you can read the book of luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19 kwamba kristo kuna mambo alisema because he is the fulfillment of jubilee na sisi tunapoingia kwa kristo we enter into a rest we enter into a year called jubilee hallelujah bwana kwamba yesu alisema when he took the scroll in the temple alipoingia pale kaluni akasema the spirit of the lord is upon me alikuwa na nena maneno kuhusu jubilee bwana yesu ainuliwe akasema one i want you to note three things alisema i have come to proclaim liberty to the captives nimekuja kutangaza uhuru kwa walio liberty to the captives ni kumaanisha wale walio shikwa kama mateka those who are captives either to the devil those who are captives of sin those who are captives to wickedness nimekuja kutangaza uhuru wao he said to proclaim liberty to the captives number two he said to set at liberty those who are oppressed kuweka uhuru walio teswa ama wanaonewa are we together and the number three he said and to declare the year of the lord na kutangaza mwaka wa bwana bwana yesu apasifa mwaka wa bwana ni nini what is the year of the lord because he had in him he knew when the year of the lord comes people have rest na ndio sababu ibrania anasema those wale walioingia kwa kristo they have entered into a rest they have ceased from their own works kazi zao zimeisha maana wameingia katika pumziko ya bwana hallelujah when we come to the lord i want you to see that Christ causes to himself one aweze kumaliza utumwa aweze kumaliza utumwa wa uovu utumwa wa dhambi utumwa wa shetani aweze kuondoa ile ama to declare liberty to those who are oppressed kule imbilisi amekuwa akikuonea na kukutesa na kukuangaisha au na amani au na furaha unakaa maisha yasiyo na sababu Christ said I have come to set a liberty those who are oppressed Hallelujah He saying nimekuja ku cancel the debt of sin Praise God Sindio Because he has come to declare liberty kutangaza ama to proclaim liberty to the captives wale ambao walikuwa mateso ama mateka ni akina nani because to whom you yield your lives or your body members to his servants you will become yesu alikuta watu waliokuwa mateka mateka wa imbilisi mateka wa shetani mateka wa dhambi mateka wa uovu mateka kati kama mawazo mateka wa magonjwa mateka wa laana hey 
and he comes and he says nimekuja kutangaza mwaka wa bwana haleluya wale walionewa ili waweze kuwepo huru walioteswa na ibilisi waweze kufunguliwa wale wamewekwa katika gereza za shetani waweze kutoka Christ came to declare the year of jubilee to every man in this world and those who hear this gospel and they receive it hallelujah wanawekwa huru wanawekwa huru bwana wetu apewe sifa because i believe christ came so that he can fulfill this in our lives aweze kutekeleza haya katika maisha yetu as i said you can read the book of romans chapter 6 verse 6 and verse 16 ambao inasema do you not knowing this that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin may be done away with kwamba tulipoangikwa na Yesu alikuwa anamaliza utumwa wa dhambi ili mwili wa dhambi aumalize aondoe aweke upya wa maisha katika maisha ya kila mkristo bwana wetu apoe sifa that you should no longer be slaves to sin maana wakati tulikuwa kwa dhambi we were slaves to sin i'm reading verse 6 that we should no longer be slaves to sin because tukijitoa kwa dhambi tunakuwa watumwa na nikwambie dhambi ikikufanya mtumwa inakutumia hello dhambi ikikufanya mtumwa inakutawala inakudominate inakuongoza inakuelekeza inakufanya ufanya what it wants and not what you want when sin is controlling your life it dictates who is your friend where do you go how do you live hata inaamurisha unalala masaa ngapi hello inasema wewe ni mtumwa wangu utakaa nje masaa ishirini haurudi nyumbani no wonder sometimes unaongea na mtu anakuambia sijui ni kwa nini nafanya hivi you know sometimes unauliza mtu anakuambia mimi nime every time there is someone i was talking with akaniambia mimi sipendi yale ninafanya lakini nikijipata na pesa siwezi kucontrol lazima niende nikalewe na siwezi kurudi nyumbani mpaka hizo pesa ziishe huyo mtu anatumikia maisha yake kweli si ni mtumwa he is serving under the mastership of another hiyo pesa ikishika hivi inamwambia wewe hauwezi kurudi nyumbani unarudi nyumbani aje na mimi ndio nasema ninasema unakaa hapa kwa hii kijiji for the next one week mpaka pesa ikwishe kabisa siku ile imeisha ako broke ndio anarudi nyumbani ana hata ya chakula and you can imagine what that means hiyo ndiyo tunasema utumwa wa dhambi lakini Yesu akasema nilikuja ili niwaweke huru na ili nivunje hizo sheria za dhambi katika maisha yenu because i want you to know as long as you are not under Christ sin is a master in your life dhambi inatawala lakini ukija kwa Yesu unawekwa huru and that's why we need to ask ourselves kama umekuja kwa Yesu alivunja hii minyororo alivunja hizi sheria alivunja utawala wa huyu adui aliyekutawala mbeleni is it still functional in your life did Christ take over hallelujah bwana wetu apewe sifa tulisema because to whom you yield your bodies to his servants you become lakini what i want us to understand here is tunapokuja kwa Yesu we serve him willingly and by choice hapa ndio ninaweza kusema when we understand slavery under Christ ama utumwa ndani ya Kristo slavery is not bad when you have the right master somebody said that kwamba utumwa si mbaya bora uko katika your master eh, is the right one and so when we serve under Christ 
Ingawa we are called slaves, but we are there willingly, deliberately, by choice. Bwana wetu ainuliwe. Exodus chapter 21 verse 5 and 6. Exodus chapter 20, 21. Exodus 21 verse 5 and 6, I want to bring the point home. Mlina sema hivi. But if the servant plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or to the doorpost, and his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Now, after the year of Jubilee has been declared, what is offensive? Lina sema kulikuwa na uhuru wa either uondoke uende ama u decide yes, nimekuwa mtuma lakini mimi sitaki kuondoka maana ilikuwa kwamba ukiondoka if you came in as a slave you may go but you leave your family behind lakini sheria ilikuwa inasema ikiwa wewe mwenyewe kwa hiari yako Utasema ni mwaka wakwenda nyumbani Lakini si taenda mimi I love my wife I love my children I love my master Then unajiweka katika utumwa Lakini kwa hiari yako mwenyewe And by your own choice Si kwa kusukumiwa sasa Utumwa wakisha But I've chosen to remain a slave By choice Hallelujah Na ukiamua kumake yourself. Sasa hapa si kulazimisha na bwana wako. You decide I want to be a slave. Unamwambia maana ninataka kukuwa mtumwa kwa upendo. Maana nina watoto hapa ninawapenda. Nina mke wangu hapa ninampenda. Nina master wangu hapa ninampenda. I want to serve and love as a slave. Bwana Yesu apesipa. And the Bible say at that point Yule slave angepelekwa kwa judges it would not be secret angepelekwa mbele ya judges na angesema kwa hiari toboa sikio langu kusema i want to obey you by love by choice praise god na angetobolewa sikio lake ili asema kuanzia leo mimi si mtumwa wa kuondoka jubilee ikilia mimi si mtumwa wa leo na kesho I'm here to serve you a bond servant but out of choice. Bwana Yesu apesipa. Bwana Yesu inuliwe. Are we working together? So unaona kuna mtuma, I want you to see this. There is a slave who is by enforcement. Unaweza kuwa mtuma maana umelazimishwa. Na pia unaweza kuwa mtuma maana umekubali na unapenda. So when we come to Christ, we are not servants, we are not slaves, we are not bond servants because we are being forced. Ninataka tuelewe hivyo. Kwamba when we come to the Lord Jesus, hatukulazimishwa, we chose to be slaves by volition, willingly. Nile unambiwa you are free to go home, unasema sitaenda. You are free to live in Sitaki dhambi, you are free to go to the world. I don't want. Unasema I'm ready to stay here. Because here I know there is my wife. Here I know there is my inheritance. Here I know there are my children. I know my tomorrow is in the Lord. I want to stay. And I've chosen to stay willingly. Tell somebody a slave by choice. A slave by choice. Si lazimishu kuwa kwa wakovu. Bwana asifiwe of the freedom to go but you say I am not going your freedom to go to sin unasema siendi kwa dhambi yes. i have chosen to be a slave to the lord jesus christ willingly yes. hallelujah bwana yesu apewe sifa amen na wakati walikuwa wanatobolewa sikio ni kusema i am ready to obey 
Yaani sikio langu na kupatia kukuambia unayosema sauti yako nitasikia na unayosema nitatii toboa sikio la unapeleka unasema toboa wewe ulipeleka sikio ukamwambia Yesu atoboe Tope sifa You know we have people that came to the Lord they want to stay as slaves lakini wana expect kuendelea kulazimisho kukaa Eh you want to be a slave lakini wakulazimisha kwa Yesu hakuna slave wa kulazimishwa if you will be a slave then you must choose willingly to become you must choose willingly to stay you must choose willingly to obey amen hapana kukaa katika nyumba ya Mungu kama a forced slave hapana kaa katika nyumba ya Mungu kama anayehitaji kufungwa kamba ili asikule mahindi ya wengine Hello? Hello. Tell your neighbor I'm here by choice. I want you to say I'm here by choice. I chose to be a slave of Christ. Niliamua kuwa mfungwa wa Yesu. I chose it willingly. Nilijamulia mwenyewe. Bwana yetu apee sifa. You know, the Bible says this servant he would surrender his will. Si amekubali anasema i have surrendered my will i have surrendered my choice i have surrendered my freedom i have surrendered everything else ambayo ningepata kama ningeenda nje i have chosen to stay a slave hallelujah bwana wetu apee sifa and i believe we have willingly and deliberately chosen to be slaves of righteousness We have willingly taken the mark of the Christian faith. Kama vile wa jamanga jipeleka anasema toboa sikio. We willingly gave our lives to Jesus. Hallelujah. And we must serve in this willingness. Now we must serve with a lot of yani tunatumika tena kwa hiari na upendo mwingi. Bwana wetu apee sifa. The Bible say I want you to see what a willing slave means. Genesis chapter 29 verse 20. Inasema So Genesis 29:20. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. <laughs> Bana hizo ndio Nina sema Jacobo alikuwa ametumika miaka alifanya miaka ngapi? Saba. Lakini kwake ilikuwa ni kama siku ngapi? Just at I say me a few weeks and they look to him like just a few days because of the love that he had for her. You see when you serve as a slave because of love You have given your life to Jesus. That is why the Lord says in the book of Matthew 11:28, 29, anasema come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. For my yoke is you see there is slavery. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now burden is light yoke like Jacob Jacob miaka saba ameambiwa kama unataka recho seven years ya kufunga ngo, kuchunga ngombe and every morning you would walk up and would say six more years to go five more years to go four more years to go three more years to go until he finished unfortunately akapewa lea but what i want you to see is the bible say he served so willingly alitumika kwa hiari tena kwa upendo na zile siku hakuona zikiwa mingi aliziona kama ni chache sana maana alikuwa na upendo wa kile kilimfanya atumike do you know when you serve christ out of love a willing slave when you become a slave of christ by choice your love will help you not to feel the weight of the burden Your love will help you not to feel the yoke on your neck. Yes, umetobolewa sikio lakini haikusumbui. Hallelujah. Hawezi kukambi, but that's 
not a problem to you. You are contented because you are willingly in this slavery. Umeamua kuwa hapa kwa hiari. Bwana asifiwe. Nabili nasema, the yoke is light. Yani kushi maisha ya wakovu. Si mzigo. You are willingly in this, this slavery. Na kuwa kwa wakovu. Si mzigo. Kumti yesu. Si sheria. Bwana asifiwe. Si kwa kulazimishwa. Hawitati kupigwa viboko. Hapana. Nabili nasema, my yoke is light. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Mzigo wangu ni mwepesi. Yaani kuwa katika wokovu unapoingia na kumwambia Bwana toboa hii sikio. Unamwambia toboa niko tayari, nitakaa willingly. Nitoboa Bwana niko tayari. Bwana asifiwe. Unampatia maisha yako unamwambia Bwana toboa mikono yangu. Wengine wakipigana sitapigana. Toboa mdomo wangu. Wengine wakiongea maneno mazito na machafu sitaongea kwa sababu willingly nimeupeana bana asifiwe nimekupea maisha yangu ya tawale i am willingly here to obey and to love you mzigo wako si mzito kwangu let me tell you if you are in the kingdom and you are finding being a living a christian life a burden a baggage haukutobolewa siku haukupeana kwa hiari kama uko katika lakini unasikianga maubiri akipita yanakugonga unasema hiyo siwezi na kuambia bado sikio halijatobolewa bado sikio halijatobolewa na kama kuna viungo zako vimekataa kutii Yesu Yesu alisema in Matthew 18 akasema kama mmoja inakupeleka jenamu heri toa uende mbinguni bila hiyo lakini upatikana wapi kunawezekana Mwambie mwenzako kunawezekana. Haleluya. Na hiyo inakusumbua pelekea Yesu atoboe. Bwana asifiwe. Akisha atoboa, mambo inakuwa rahisi. Kumtii Yesu inakuwa rahisi. Kukaa kanisani inakuwa rahisi. Kutii njia za Mungu inakuwa rahisi. Kuenenda katika wokovu inakuwa rahisi. Kukaa katika nuru inakuwa hiari. Bwana asifiwe. Maana nimesema we have got two types of slaves kuna yule ambaye ni wakulazimishwa hebu muulize mwenzako are you a forced slave in the kingdom or are you a slave by choice amen hallelujah sema kwa ujasiri ama slave by choice sema mwambie mwenzako mimi ni mtumwa kwa hiari i am in this kingdom by choice yes hallelujah Aliye nilipia deni zangu nilikubali. Yes. Alipobeba mizigo yangu nilikubali. Yes. Aliposema I am free. Yes, I am free, but I, my freedom is not a clock to sin. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bwana asopee sifa. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. You need to ask yourself, are my ears pierced? Are my hands Yesu aliguza mikono yangu nilipokuja kwake. Because we are people who are in the kingdom lakini kijini chini wanapigana na ndugu zao na dada zao na, du, na majirani. Mikono haikuwa wounded because when Christ touches your ears they surrender to him. Akiguza mikono yako inakuwa wounded, it can't fight. Akiguza ulimi wako unabadilika. Hauwezi kuongea kama wa dunia. Hauwezi kuwa wewe ndiye unasengenya na huu ulime uje kuabudu Mungu hapana unakataa unauambia lazima utii unautiisha kwa sababu umetobolewa bana wetu apewe sifa unaleta your, your mind your tongue your body your soul your spirit every rebellious organ unaiambia you must obey this law of God willingly amen hallelujah I want to finish by asking what is keeping you from being a slave at, by choice. Ni nini inakuzuia wewe ulie mshirika hapa kanisani? Ulie mmoja wetu hapa kanisani. Tunaye kuita ndugu yetu hapa kanisani. Ni nini inakuzuia usikue mtumwa wa Yesu kwa hiari? Ni nini inakufanya uonekane rebellious, rebellious, yaani mkatili, asiye mtii Mungu? Ni nini inakufanya 
wenye dhambi wa kuseme wa kuongea waseme wewe ni mshirika kanisani lakini that is to tell you kuna mahali haukutobolewa kuna mahali kuna sikia ukutobolewa mwambie Yesu leo toboa katika jina la Yesu niko tayari kutii sheria zako what makes one a slave mniruhusu nimalize kwa kusema hivi ni nini inamfanya mtu kuwa a slave of Christ number one, you must change the way you live lazima ubadilishe mienendo ya maisha yako you must give Christ the uttermost of your life number two, you must refuse to prostitute your heart mind soul and strength to the idols of self-centeredness lazima ukatae sitapeana maisha yangu sita prostitute my heart my soul my mind my body my spirit kwa ile mapenzi yangu mwenyewe you know there is something that the psalmist says and i believe it is very important for us to understand to hear this psalms 101 verse 3 the psalmist says I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. Kwamba nitakataa vijana na the young generation, watu ambao mnaingia kwa mtandao and you are able to watch takataka na vitu vya uovu. You know, kama kweli mawazo yako yalipelekwa kwa Yesu, akayatoboa. You know in in Psalms 40 I think it's verse 6. Psalms 40 verse 6 anasema my tongue ama my mouth have you opened the old version inasema my tongue have you pierced yani umei kama vile alisema the slave anaenda anatobolewa masikio you can surrender your tongue to the lord to pierce and what i'm saying here ni kwamba daudi anasema macho yangu sitaruhusu macho yangu kwenda kuona you know We have read Psalms 101 verse 3. Hmm? Psalms 101 verse 3 I, I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. That is the New Living Translation. New Living Translation in Asema, I'll refuse to look at anything that is vile and vulgar. Vile ni kusema nini? Kitu kile kichafu. Vulgar tunasema kuna vulgar language. Unaweza kuongea maneno machafu. Hiyo ndio inaitwa vulgar language. Na Biblia inasema kama wewe ulikubali kutobolewa, basi lazima wewe unaweza kusema sitakubali macho yangu yaone takataka. Najua kuna siku moja hapa nilihubiria kwamba watu wanaona pornography. Na the following Sunday mshirika wenu akanitumia pornography kwa simu yangu. Yes, I'm sorry to say this. Kumaanisha hata ukiniambia ulitumiwa ukatuma kwa makosa kwangu uko una watch yes it means you watch those takatakas i'm telling you watu lazima tukombolewe we are not here by we are not slaves by enforcement lazima tukubali ya kwamba mimi si eh, mtumwa kwa kulazimishwa mimi ni mtumwa kwa sababu nampenda yesu bwana asifiwe amen you must choose to say I will not watch pornography. I will not watch bad movies. I will not watch things that defile my mind. Sitaangalia vitu ambavyo zinajinajisi mawazo yangu. Maana nimeokoka and I'm in the kingdom by choice. I'm a slave by choice. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Lazima tuseme I'm willing to be here. Change your life and refuse to prostitute your heart with anything that comes. Kila kitu kinakuja unakiambia come, ingia, tembea kuja kwangu hata marafiki wengine lazima ufukuze maishani mwako yes kuna watu inahitaji utoe maishani mwako ili maisha uishi maisha ya wokovu so that you can be a believer kuna watu utaweza ku entertain in your house yes you must choose who you are bwana asifiwe can we stand before god na mwambie bwana leo katika jina la yesu hallelujah naomba katika jina la yesu mwambie bwana ninaomba kwamba leo kama kuna sehemu yangu ambayo haujaguza, haujatoboa, haujaleta katika your own authority. Lord, I surrender to you. Nataka tumwambie Bwana 
I'm committing my life to be a slave to you by choice. Kwamba ninataka kuwa mtumwa katika hii ufalme kwa hiari. Sitaki kuwa katika ufalme kwa kutazamwa na kuangaliwa na kuongozwa na watu wengine. Nataka niwe mtumwa kwa sababu nimekubali. Yes, kama Jacobo alikubali kutubika ili apewe recho na miaka ikaonekana the church lakini haufurahi ile sheria za kanisa haufurahi sheria za Mungu haufurahi kuwa mwokovu haufurahi kuishi njia za yani even living and walking the christian life is a burden to you mwambie bwana leo raisisha huu mzigo leo raisisha maisha yangu leo raisisha maisha yangu i don't want to be here to be burdened i want to enjoy life in salvation i want to enjoy life in christ I want to enjoy the grace of salvation. Nataka nifurahie neema ya wokovu. Nataka nifurahie kuitanishwa nawe Bwana. Yes in the name of Jesus. Unaweza kuwa hapa lakini hii maisha ni mzigo. Wao kuishi kwa wokovu ni shida. Yaani kutii njia za Mungu ni sheria. We refuse to be under the law. Tukataa kutii kwa sheria. But we want to enjoy grace. Tunataka kufurahia neema katika jina la Yesu maseka ya telabashanda re maseka ya telabashanda rababu raka telabozeka ya telabashande re dekarababu makatela bazoro boshaka ya telaboza re mashanda rababu ria maseka ya telabozenda rababu in the name of Jesus father i pray father i pray for a touch of your life for the touch of your power for a touch of your presence for the touch of your presence that will change men and the women's life in the name of Jesus o kama senda rebabu re kama saka ya telabu zenda rebabu in the name of Jesus ninaomba katika jina la Yesu pray that will surrender our lives are fresh mwambie bwana Yesu leo i give you my life i give you my life i give you my body i give you my spirit i give you my mind All that I am I surrender to you. All that I am I lay it before you. I am willingly choosing to be a slave in this kingdom. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us be together. Let us be together. Unaweza kuwa katika nyumba ya Mungu. Lakini kwa uhakika maisha ya wokovu hayajakuwa na ladha kwako umekuwa katika kanisa lakini wokovu haujawahi kukubadilisha kuna mahali unajua kabisa ulisema hapa baba utoboi hii nimekataa nayo sikupei hii nimekataa nayo hii ni yangu i'm telling you for you to remain you must say ninapenda kuwa hapa ninapenda uwe kama my master ninapenda kwa hapa palipo na mke wangu na watoto wangu hapa ndipo pana urithi you must know the lord is here to change your life na ukikubali maisha yako itabadilika but it is not by contention hauwezi kupokea baraka za Mungu kama uko katika nyumba ya Mungu kwa kulazimishwa hata tunapokuombea ubarikiwe tunapokuombea Mungu akupanue badala ya kupanuka tunagonga mamba you must release yourself to the lord lazima umwambie bwana ndio kuna mahali nilikuwa nimeshikilia lakini leo nawachilia. Kuna sehemu nilikuwa nimekatalia lakini leo ninakupa. Tell the Lord I give you. Bwana leo ninawachilia. Hii sehemu yangu ninakupa. Bwana jo tawala. Jo ingia ndani yangu. Take over and rule in my body, in my spirit, in my soul in the name of Jesus. Tawala viungo zangu. Tawala mwili wangu. Give the Lord your kama ulimi wako ndio shida mwambie bwana leo ninakupa ulimi wangu kama masikio yako yanapenda kwenda kusikiza bad stories macho yako yanakimbianga kuona the dirty things mwambie leo baba ninasema toboa hii baba toboa hii katika jina la Yesu toboa hii sehemu katika jina toboa hii kutii mwambie bwana toboa hii kutii katika jina la Yesu e kama senda rebabu Baba tunakupa. Baba tunakupa yote. Baba tunakupa yote. Baba tunakupa yote katika jina la Yesu. Nasema Bwana toboa, toboa masikio, toboa macho, toboa masikio, 
toboa macho toboa bwana ulimi toboa mawazo katika jina la Yesu toboa bwana sehemu ambazo zijakuwa surrender to you naomba katika jina la Yesu ya kwamba bwana great lives will be surrendered to you bwana maisha ikapeanwa kwako naomba baba siku ya leo mili bwana mawazo baba tabia zikapeanwa kwako hali ambazo zimekuwa nzito bwana sehemu ambazo zimekuwa mapito ya mbilisi sehemu ambazo zimekuwa utawala wa mapepo leo take over today in the name of jesus hallelujah in the name of jesus hallelujah okoka kuokoka ni kumwambia Yesu toboa toboa hii masikio toboa haya macho toboa hii mikono toboa mawazo yangu toboa maisha yangu i give it to you mwambie baba ninakupa nasema i surrender it to you willingly i surrender to you i choose to be a slave i choose to be your slave willingly in jesus name amen amen Inua mkono wako. Unasema kuna sehemu yangu nataka kumpa Yesu leo. Unasema mimi najua najua kabisa kuna kiungo kimenishinda kutawalisha kwa Yesu. I want to give it to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh baba we give you praise. Baba tunakupa enzi. Ana unayeona kwa siri. Baba wetu unayeona mawazo na kuyajua yanasema nini we unayesikia maneno kabla hayajanenwa we unayeona mikono iliyoinuliwa mbele zako ninasema bwana kama vile neno lako limetuelekeza siku ya leo wewe watutangazia mwaka wa bwana mwaka wa kuwekwa huru lakini bwana wanaotaka kukaa katika ulimwengu wamekatalia ulimwengu lakini sisi tulio hapa Baba tutayari kuenenda katika njia zako. Tutayari kuyatekeleza mapenzi yako, kutenda makusudi yako. Na Bwana zile sehemu zimekuwa shida. Zile sehemu zimekuwa ngumu. Zile sehemu zimekataa kutii na kunyenyekea katika mapenzi yako. Baba tunazinua mbele yako siku ya leo. Tunasema kama vile mtumwa angejitolea kwa Bwana wake na kusema toboa sikio langu kuanzia leo ninakutii kwa hiari nitakutumikia kwa upendo baba tunasema katika jina la Yesu guza maisha ya wanaosikia guza maisha bwana kila sehemu wanaipeana baba let it be surrendered to you and submitted to your will kutoka siku ya leo katika jina la Yesu asante bwana baba ninaomba ukombozi ninaomba ukombozi ninaomba uponyaji Ninaomba ukombozi, ninaomba uponyaji wa mioyo, ninaomba ukombozi wa nafsi, naomba ukombozi wa miili, viungo vya maisha yetu katika jina la Yesu. Na Bwana njoo utawale kuanzia leo na hata milele. Asante kwa wokovu wako, asante kwa neema ya wokovu, asante kwa kibali hichi. Pokea sifa na utukufu katika jina la Yesu, tumeomba na kuamini. Amen. So God bless you. Bwana Yesu awabariki. Bwana Yesu awatende mema.